Hi. So in this video, it should be a little shorter. Um, we're going to go over um, a student example or student, a common student error. Um, and then we're going to break down um, what happens uh, when we kind of look at things from a different point of view. So what we had been asking is when I'm pulling bags of uh, chocolate out of the bag, um, what I was asking is, um, say that I randomly pick a bag and pull out a chocolate and I show you that I pulled out a dark chocolate. What are your chances of guessing which bag I pulled the chocolate out of? Right? So this is what I had asked. So next I'm going to say, pretend I'm being manipulative and I'm going to change what I say. What I'm going to now say is say that I pick a bag and pull out a chocolate and I show you that I pulled out a dark chocolate. What are the chances of guessing which bag I pulled the chocolate out of? Um, now, I wish this was on the same page, but hopefully you can see this um, on your notes. Uh, but a common student error is to say, well, they're, they're, they're the same. Like, there's no uh, difference. Um, and there's actually a difference. So what is the difference? Um, I'll do this in blue. And it's actually in the fourth word. So here I say, say that I randomly pick a bag. But here I don't. Here I say, say that I pick a bag. And what this means is if I'm not saying randomly, that means, well, that I'm not, I don't randomly pick a bag. That is what's different about the Seneca example. And what this means is there's actually an inherent assumption, an implicit assumption, when we looked at this word randomly. When I say something is randomly chosen, what I'm saying is every single option has the same probability, right? There's a one-third chance for the first bag, one-third chance for the second bag, one-third chance for the third bag. Now, if I no longer say that, if I now just say I choose a bag, well, Maybe the bags are different colors and one of them is blue and I like the color blue, so I'm always going to choose that bag. The, the probabilities are no longer one third, one third, one third. It's not random anymore. It's fixed. Like they have different probabilities. It's going to screw up all of my different things, right? Um, so what we're basically saying is we're changing these probability BIs, right? Um, now we can do this. This is not a problem. Um, and what we can do is we can actually look at our previous examples and say, okay, if I have probability BI and I'm going to just set it to some PI, um, I don't know what the probability it is, um, but I can look at this, right? So for example, if I look at the probability, we'll do this generally. So if I look at probability of bag I, right, given dark, this is what we were trying to solve. We said that this is the probability of bag I given D divided by the probability of D. And this is the probability of, come on, erase, of D given bag I uh, times the probability of bag I divided by the probability of D. All right, so most of these numbers we know. Um, like, for example, for I equals 1, we know that we have the prob so probability of D of bag 1. I guess this one's going to be easy. <laughs> uh, so actually, here, before I do this, we'll make this part a little easier to read. So this, we know, is probability of D given bag 1, bag I, sorry, times uh, P of I, right? So this is what we had defined here. So we put this into here. And we know what the probability of D is, right? This is just 1 fourth. So I can kind of bring this 4 up and just multiply by 4. So for i equals 4, we have 4 pi, the probability of d bag 1. And this is technically zeros, right? So p1 times 0. So how about i equals 2? What we get is 4 times p2, p of d given bag 2. Uh, and this one we also know, right? This one is 1 half, right? It's 2 over 4. So it's 4 times P2 times 2 over 4. So we get 2 P2. I equals 3. Well, this is 4 times P3. P of D given bag 3. 
This is 4p3. And here we had a 1 fourth chance, so we just have p3. Um, and so what this means is these probability numbers are going to be dependent on what my preference function kind of is. Uh, they're definitely possible, but you can kind of see that we end up with variables and we don't really know what to do. Um, so yeah, so we'll kind of end this week here to kind of see what we can and can't do so far. We will eventually start getting into more complicated things. Uh, next week, we'll start looking at what's called the binomial distribution, um, and we'll kind of get into that really um, heavily. So we'll look at a particular distribution for a couple weeks um, and understand that very well, and then we'll start um, getting much more general. Uh, so that's it for week two. Uh, I will see you uh, in class, I guess. Peace out. Thanks.